The German armored car in the gentleman's war box set can be built either as a 222 or 223. I chose a 222 variant for a couple of reasons. While I liked the unique look of the bed frame radio antenna, I was afraid it would snap off in game handling. Also, there's a light auto cannon on the 222, which brings a little more firepower to a small armored car. So because of those two reasons, that's why I chose to go to 222. This kit is actually a scale model kit from Italiri and consists of only two sprues. Building begins with the bottom tub and adding the four wheel drive axles and differentials. There are location pins that only allow you to install the parts one way. The lower body panels are then added to each side, referencing instructions for orientation. Like its box mate, the British Mark II Humber, the wheels are glued directly onto the solid axles, which means that they don't spin or move at all. The wheels are built from two parts each, and all four are identical, as you would expect from a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. The top half of the armored car is one piece, which makes assembly a snap. The remaining bits all get added to the body next, and include exhaust, pioneering tools, taillights, edge location devices, and such. The right side is pretty much the same, except the stowage bins are replaced with a covered spare tire. The call-out in the assembly guide is pretty straightforward on all parts and where they go on the vehicle. Egress hatches all have well-defined locations, attachment points, and go on next. The next part of the build is to make the weaponry, which for the 222 variant is the autocannon and the coax machine gun and some get cemented and others do not. This allows the cannon to freely move from the horizontal to the vertical. In real life and in game, the cannon could provide some light anti-aircraft cover. After gluing the top plate in place, the whole gun assembly can drop right into place on its mounting stud. The last bit to build is the turret, which is really just a ring of armored plating and two screened hatches, which I chose to model open for two reasons. One, to signify the vehicle's open top rule, and second, to allow the cannon to elevate vertically for anti-aircraft operations. Painting started with an overall flat black primer coat. Primer helps set the starting undertone and helps the first layer of paint adhere properly. If I had a German Panzer Gray primer, that would have been perfect, but black will do. After the primer has cured, the whole vehicle was top coated in a green ochre which gives a brown orange tone to the black with the black primer. That was left to dry and cure before moving on to an oil wash. For this German armored car, I used raw umber and yellow ochre. The goal here is to dilute the oil paints enough that they will wick into all the fine detail. After painting the wash over the entire model, not including the guns, I gave it about a 30 minute to an hour time to start to dry, just enough to knock off the thinner. And then I came back in with first dry cotton swabs to remove the large pools sitting on the flat surfaces before working down to the finer details. Thinner dampened swabs were used to remove stubborn paint and tide marks. And what we're left with is concentrated pigments in the recesses and fine details with an overall color filter for the rest of the model. I should note that I did paint the tire cover with a mixture of Russian uniform and green ochre. And then I washed it separately with an acrylic dark brown wash. The tires were painted with a 50-50 mix of German gray and German brown camo to give a slightly sun faded rubber color. Just use care around the hubs and other detail parts. Go slow and steady. That's what wins the race. And then I came back in with a very light dry brush of pale sand to edge highlight all the rails and details. Heavy chipping was next. So what I did is I tore off a large chunk of a makeup sponge and I loaded it up with Panzer Gray paint, then tapped most of it off on a paper towel. And then slowly and steadily applied the chipping over all the hard edges where I thought the crew would step and wear down the paint. I even applied some chipping over the decals, as in the real world, they would have been painted on, not decals. Just remember, even if you want to go really heavy with the chipping, to apply it in many light layers. It's easier to build this effect up 
than to correct it later. As the German vehicles arrived in North Africa in their European overall gray color and were painted in the field. This was a less than ideal situation for painting. Uh, the paint didn't get a chance to cure, it was field applied, um, colors didn't always match, and they consequently suffered from heavy paint chipping more so than the Allied armor that was painted the proper color at a factory someplace. Once I was satisfied with the chipping, the last bit of weathering was an overall sandy, dusty look. This was achieved by over diluting some Iraqi sand acrylic paint, let's say a 30 to 1 ratio uh, with water, and then letting the wash wick and pool from a large brush. Any heavy pooling was pulled back with a slightly damp brush and it was left to dry. The heavy dilution will cause the acrylic paint to dry chalky, which normally we don't want, but in this case, it really helps sell the fine coating of sand everywhere. I based this armor car on a cut down piece of quarter inch MDF uh, to which I added some Vallejo's earth textured desert sand, which also acts as a glue. And the last little bits were to add some dead grass tufts and a few flowers just to add some character, much like I did in my Humber video. The edges of the base were painted in German gray, which will match the rest of the infantry from the core box. And there you have it. This is how I built and painted my German armored car from the Gentleman's War Box set. And now it's time to start gaming. <laughs>